Welcome back to another episode of Stitch Method. Today, you know it's going to be special because I busted out my purple shirt. But besides that, we're going to learn how to write and improvise a song like in the classic Led Zeppelin style that you hear from the end of kind of like Led Zeppelin 4 through Houses of the Holy, especially Physical Graffiti, Coda. Um, this type of sound that I think is very unique to Led Zeppelin and it's more in their mature years and to be honest some people do like it, some people don't, but uh, as you get older you start to really you know hear things that are different and I want to present this type of uh, writing and improvising to you. So let's get down to it right away. All right, so I'm going to tell you a quick, quick, quick story. I wanted to write a Zeppelin riff um, and just solo over it, and the more and more I did it, the more I discovered some things, and I was like, oh, this is so cool. So I'm just going to present to you the, the fashion in which I discovered them in, and then we'll talk about it, and then we'll uh, jam together on it, hopefully, and then you can go write something with it. Here we go. So the first ingredient you need uh, to write this Zeppelin-ish type riff is a minor pentatonic. Any minor pentatonic will do. I happen to choose an E minor pentatonic, and so the notes that the notes that are in my bank uh, for writing this riff are just these simple five notes. All right? You can hear the the that type of mentality already. All right. So I said to myself, well, I'm not going to play in this box. I'm going to kind of find it some other places. I chose there. Then I came up with a riff. Okay. And this is a step number one and a half. Find your a minor pentatonic and write a riff with power chords around the pentatonic. My riff, and I know it initially sounds like Soundgarden, don't worry, we'll zeppelinize it, was this. I was like, cool, good enough for me. And now the second step, and I, I know the step because I love Led Zeppelin and I and I'm like keen to some of Jimmy Page's like songwriting styles, um, is to add the major third of whatever you were just doing. So what I mean by that is, you know, I took the power chord and uh, this is my D. I went from D to E, back to D, A, then G to A, back to G to E. Instead of using music theory, you can use some of the guitar neck map for you. Um, here, instead of a power chord, I played my major chord, and I know my intervals. One, five, one, major third. And on that B string. There's my one, there's my major third. And so, instead of just playing the power chord, I added the major third. And then when I get down to these power chords on the E string, well, instead of playing a power chord, I played my major chord because I, I need a major third, and my major third is right where my middle finger is. And you can hear the... Sorry. Now I can go here, but I didn't like that, so I took this root note for the E and brought it up here. So this is what it sounds like with my major thirds on top of my riff. My volume turned low there, so I hope I was <laughs> synced up. All right, so you can hear right off the bat that harmony uh, to me has a very distinct, mature Led Zeppelin sound. And so, how do you solo over this? Well, when I was writing this by myself, my first initial reaction was, or idea, was to solo with the minor pentatonic. I'm playing an E minor riff, uh, E minor pentatonic riff. Let's solo with the E minor pentatonic. But I'm going to do that. I'm going to show you. It does sound good, but I didn't get. Jimmy Page. I didn't get Jimmy Page. I got Angus Young, okay? I got, it's as if Angus Young stepped in and wrote a solo for this. And I'll play and show you. I'm just going to play my E minor pentatonic. And I'm going to put the loop on, and you can hear it just doesn't sound like Jimmy Page that much. It sounds good, it sounds ripping, and you can kind of be like, well, it kind of sounds like Jimmy Page, but it's not the Jimmy Page sound that I was really, really looking for. And I said, well, what is that sound? And then I had to take a step back, and this is what's really cool. I'm going to show you my discovery. After that, you don't need to know about it, because you can just do it. But I looked at those major thirds. I said, wait a second, like, what's going on with those major thirds? And what happened was, when I played the E minor pentatonic riff... 
sorry. Volume always works. And I figured out those those major thirds, and I kind of tried to keep them together. I was looking at that, and all of a sudden I realized that was an E major pentatonic, and my mind started going like, what, what just happened here? And it's really cool because this, you'll see, this is the sound we're getting closer to Led Zeppelin sound, and he takes an E minor pentatonic riff, puts the major thirds on it, and when you play the major thirds of the minor pentatonic, you magically get an E major pentatonic. Just to show you, here's my E major pentatonic up on the 9th and 12th fret. And those notes... from it. And so my mind said, well, is it possible that he plays uh, an E major pentatonic on top of that? That would be weird, wouldn't it? And so I loaded up my distortion and I did the loop, put in my major thirds. Wait a second, yeah, that that sounds a lot closer. And I was like, wait a second, how is this working? Because it's not always that. And then my brain realized, because he puts the major thirds in on top of his minor pentatonic riff, it creates a parallel riff of E major. So here's my minor uh, pentatonic riff, like... Whatever. And then when you play the major thirds, it traces out the same movement, but this becomes a major pentatonic. And Jimmy Page has the sound of playing major pentatonic riffs and minor pentatonic riffs at the same time when, when he adds that major third. And so this is your minor pentatonic, this is your major, and then it goes, you know, they're moving the exact same intervals away from each other, but one traces out a minor pentatonic, one traces out a major pentatonic. And that gives you the freedom to solo in between major pentatonics and minor pentatonics and blend them together also with a mixodorian scale linked below. But you don't need to know about that mixodorian right now. You can just think major pentatonic and minor pentatonic. The idea that you hear, and I'm going to talk about some songs in Zeppelin that, that he does this in, but the idea is he usually comes in with the major pentatonic and then bites on like a shark with the minor, then let's go and play some more major and then bites back down with this minor sound. And so again, I'm not going to play anything fast, I'm not going to go crazy, but I want you to hear the sounds and the freedom you have now when you design a riff off a minor pentatonic, add the major thirds, and now you have these two soloing machines that can go back and forth. Let's give a listen. <laughs> Some of Jimmy Page's sounds are uplifting, and blending them, major to minor, major to minor, gives you so many more notes and so many more ideas, and more freedom on the guitar neck. And so you can write your own riff, you can write your own riff with the same exact mentality and get the same exact uplifting sound. So what I'm going to do is play one more time, but actually I'm going to, I'm going to put in my major thirds uh, on the loop, and then I'm going to show you, um, which I forgot to do, but it doesn't matter because it's working. Here we go. Sorry, I had a, a looper malfunction. I just looped the, <laughs> the um, which is common. Uh, I just looped the major thirds in. Now what I'm going to do is just take brief, nothing fancy. I just I want you to hear the sounds. I'm going to take brief solos between major and minor pentatonics, maybe blend them, and you can see how this will give you an awesome palette to solo on if you have major pentatonic access and minor pentatonic access, and you can blend them too. So usually Jimmy Page starts off with major, so I'll do the same thing. Very sparse soloing, I want you to hear the differences. Here we go.
it and blend them any which way you want as long as you can see them and again on my channel I have major pentatonic stuff I have minor pentatonic stuff the Mixodorian scale you can blend that stuff together but this type of sound gives you a lot of freedom like I can keep going. One thing I wanted to mention is you can hear this clearly in um, Black Dog, right at Led Zeppelin 4, right, right as they get into the cusp of their newer sound. Okay, well, Led Zeppelin 4 is a very new sound, but you know, as, as they get into their, their mature years, <laughs> Black Dog is an A minor pentatonic riff. <laughs> If you listen cl uh, closely, you can hear the last two riffs of those, the, right before the solo, he comes in with this harmony. Um, now he plays it with two, two guitars, but it has the, mi the major thirds. And the idea is those major thirds reach out and now say, okay, we can let that A major pentatonic um, uh, shine through. And when you listen to the solo, it comes right out on an A major pentatonic. <laughs> You know, and then it switches over to A minor and back to A major. Uh, another song I briefly want to show you that's not a Zeppelin song that um, intrigued me for a while is this song here. Give it a listen. <laughs> Listen to Eric Clapton's solo, he's in D major. And I was like, how did that happen? And when you really listen to the riff, if you look, it's a D minor, um, a D minor pentatonic or a D minor blues scale. I'll play it a different way. So you can see it. Based off of the D minor. And then what happens about the second time around? The major third harmony. major third harmony lets him bond to it and play that uh, D major solo. So what do you do? Okay, this is what you do. You design an A minor pentatonic riff, then play it a couple times, introduce the major third of the riff, great, then loop it, and then play the major pentatonic of your riff and the minor pentatonic of your riff Dance and have some fun. Write this stuff into your songwriting. We need it back into music, that classic rock Led Zeppelin sound. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Make sure you subscribe and share and all the fun stuff that goes into the YouTube world of begging for things. All right, rock and roll, guys. Take it easy. Bye-bye.